Okay, I know I've been away for a good long while, but things were fairly chaotic for me, and I couldn't get any quiet time to uh, record. But anyway, well, so anyway, here I am back, and I'm going to try something new. Uh, when there's a new, when there's a couple of news stories like this, I'm going to try to do little news update videos, and uh, in addition to uh, my regular reviews. So I'm going to start off with the head scratching. Uh, it's so funny when people who know nothing about comic books try to report on comic books news and then move on to something more um, interesting. And that is, um, and that is this, this um, extremely uh, puzzling headline by ABC that uh, says Captain Marvel is set to be the first female-led superhero movie. Now, I know a lot of people have gone, uh, what about Wonder Woman last year? Even the people who can't remember past current year remember Wonder Woman. And, you know, that's to say nothing of the fact that uh, Jessica Jones and Peggy Carter have each gotten their own series. I know it's not a movie, but those things were heavily advertised. I mean, their advertisements were everywhere. You couldn't get away from them. And they were a big deal. They're both in the MCU. But again, if you want to stalk strictly movies in the MCU, fine. But that's not what they're talking about. It's not even a first for Marvel as far as movies go since they made Elektra. Yeah, and that had uh, Kevin Feige as an executive producer on it. Yeah, I know it was Fox, but still, it was a Mar it's still... It's a Marvel character that got her own movie. And if you want to go back far enough, guess what? This is, um, this is just the, uh, this is, uh, um, just a slap in the face to Helen Slayer and everyone who was in the movie Supergirl back in 86. And a lot of people don't remember that movie and they assume that it, and people who haven't seen it assume that it was just a cheap cash in movie. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, they were serious about the character back then. They, I mean, they got Pierre O'Toole, and they and they shot it on a budget of $36 million in 1986. To put that in perspective, $36 million is about what was spent on the Star Wars movie Return of the Jedi, which was the second sequel to Star Wars. So, yeah, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't done on the cheap. And even if it was, and even if... Uh, if you, like me, don't think that that movie was very good, I still think it's better than a, than a lot of the Superman sequels, but that's another discussion. It still counts. It still was released. And, yeah, even if they meant first MCU superhero movie, female-led MCU superhero movie, so what? Isn't the one we were asking for? Uh, first of all, first of all, um, I'd argue about that since, um... I haven't seen. I ha I didn't get a chance to see because life was so chaotic this summer. I didn't get a chance to see Ant Man and the Wasp in theaters. But when I gather, she gets as much screen time as Ant Man in that. So I'd argue that the Wasp is a lead in Ant Man and the Wasp. I mean, her name is even in the title. I mean, it shouldn't not count. Just be. And she seems to actually, and evangelion lily or what however you pronounce her name i i uh, forget sorry but um she actually put time into and worked out for the role and is really into playing the role of the wasp so i would say that uh what is she chopped liver this seems insulting to her but of course um but of course she doesn't have a single she doesn't have Brie Larson's amazing single facial expression, so I guess she doesn't count. So yeah, that amazing bit of, uh, to me, that tells me that the uh, movie Captain Marvel, the trailer underwhelmed me. It just looked so average, and it looked like it didn't have a lead who was charismatic enough to make me want to watch an average superhero movie. It didn't look horrible but it also didn't look good it just looked sort of average and it didn't look like it's going to have any moments where it's going to where it's going to be fun to watch and it didn't look like it throughout the whole trailer your lead actress looks like she doesn't want to be there well if your star doesn't want to be there why should i want to be there i mean just look at it's captain marvel is a largely unknown character so just look at how she was introduced and then compare it to how Iron Man, who is also a largely unknown character outside of comic book circles, 
was introduced uh, back in 2008. There was a lot more energy to that. But then again, Robert Downey Jr. put a lot more energy to that. And if they think that they can fill Robert Downey Jr.'s shoes with this, unless she, unless everything we've seen is completely and completely misleading, I don't see how Brie Larson can replace Cap can replace Robert Downey Jr. Unless she shows a lot more energy in the movie than she did in the trailer or anything. And I'm not talking about the whole smile controversy. I don't care if she smiles, but some energy. For instance, in one shot, she's supposed to have just broken some sort of speed record in her plane or something. She doesn't have to be going, woo and smiling and doing that cliche, but she should be having some reaction. She should be, you know, reacting to the G-force or just... Or just something, but there is no emotion on her face. She she's in a machine getting her memory wiped. Most actors would make the mistake of having some sort of emotion, or make it, or making it clear that they're resisting, or that they don't like this, or that it's unpleasant. Uh, but we don't get anything. Anything. She just sort of stares there. But yeah, enough about my trailer reaction, to Captain Marvel. Let's get into something else, and it's a bit sad and something that I'm a bit hopeful for. So anyway, I was giving up Marvel after Renew Your Vows was canceled, and the final issue came in, Renew Your Vows. And as always, it was garbage tier art paired with Jody Hauser doing amazing writing. Jody Hauser, she's now in my top 10 Spider-Man writers, not only because I like how, I really like how she writes the Spider-Man family, but just for the professionalism she showed here. Simply by, I don't know what her personal politics are, but professionally she did something pre she did something pretty good which is she was put on a book that was there to be killed because Joe Casada doesn't want a married Spider-Man anywhere and renew your vows was outselling the amazing Spider-Man which is going by Joe Casada's rules so Casada put put a put their worst artist on it remove the penciler so there aren't any pencilings and they have so now it has garbage tier art i mean just look at MJ and Annie's faces here. Just look at them. They look like inhuman monsters. And look how their bodies are contorted and how it doesn't look like they, they look like they just have bones maybe under. They look like they're walking skeletons. It's it's horrible. But Jody Hauser, she had a few she had a couple of of shaky first issues that didn't have enough action in them because she was I think because she was getting to grips with the characters and such, but after that, she really started hitting it out of the house, and she did it on a book where she knew there was going to be no reward for it, where she knew that she she had to know. When you're put on this, you have to know, walking into Marvel, that Joe Quesada hates this book, and he decided to remove the good artists. He, rem he decided to assign the worst artists he could possibly find. He decided to assign somebody who has never written Spider-Man before, but... She held it together, and she and I really like the writing. Now I can't see. Now I now even I can't stand to look for, at the art. So I can't blame you if you drop the book because of the art. Because quite frankly, I mean, just look at this. It is painful to look at. However, the writing was top notch. But so I kind of have mixed feelings because. I understand that it was that wasn't selling enough. Joe Casada successfully killed it. He wanted it gone, and it's gone. I still say that it would be really cool to have an X Men film in this universe. But then, once you finish it, I get, and it ends, and they're going it because there's going to be some big event called Spider Geddon and some big crossover event. Yeah, after we had. After we had Marvel swearing there would be no more big crossover events, what is this, the third one this year? And uh, and so it's messing with all the Spider-Man books, and I guess it's going to mess with the timeline somewhat or something, but again, so we have another big Spider-Man event that messes with the timeline in less than two years. But here's the thing, it then ends with this. Next assignment, follow the continuing adventures of the Parkers in... Spider Girls, plural, number one. And I have looked on the web. I looked on Marvel's website. I looked on I looked on comic book websites. I can't find anything about what this is about. But it's obviously, but this has non-garbage -gar tier art on it. 
if this is the cover, this has non-garbage tier art. I can't find a way to order it, but it wants me to... Uh, so is it going to continue it? Is this going to be Jody Hauser's next project after Stranger Things is done? Because uh, I'm really looking forward to Stranger Things comic. Apparently people who've gotten advanced copies say that's really good. So I'm really looking forward to that. So Jody Hauser is one of those writers that I'm following because she did a good job under Impossible Conditions. And I'm hoping she's a writer on this because she seemed, because she may be, because I, cause I really like, because I was iffy about jumping Annie forward as a teenager, you know, and making her, you know, um, Mayday light. But I liked what she did with Annie May. So uh, I, but here it is. That's obviously, that's MJ in the black suit. Annie May in her black suit. And then that's Mayday's suit. So is something going to happen in Spider-Geddon that puts them all in the same timeline? Is there going to be some sort of like, I don't know, Crisis on Infinite Earths style thing? And all of a sudden, um, Mayday is going to be on the Earth with, uh, with the Peter and MJ of Renew Your Vows? Because that is a book that I will read. I will break, I was done with Marvel, but I will break out of my not reading Marvel stuff if that's what it is. And if they put Jody Hauser, if they... If, just put, you don't even have to put your best artist on it. Just put any artist that can do better than the renew your, than what we're getting from your new year vows. Put that on there and put, uh, and put, I am, and put Jody Hauser on it as writer. And I'm there. I'm there. Uh, because this looks interesting. If they somehow, if they bring Mayday back in a regular series, I'm sorry, but I have to be, I have to break my boycott and be there. So, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's the two things. Those are the two things I wanted to talk about, the two uh, silly things, and I'll see you next time. All right.